Hi, I'm Chloe and I'm going to tell you today about my experience at Gadget Meadow University as an exchange student. I have a friend here today who's going to help me. He looks very impressed. And he's gone. Hi, so I'm here today to talk about my experience as an exchange student at Universitas Gajamada in Indonesia. So I came to study in Indonesia for a period of one year, um, but unfortunately it did have to be cut short due to a little something called coronavirus, um, which unfortunately cut our time there a little bit short. Despite that, we did complete one full semester and about a third of the second semester. Most exchange students, we found, only stay there for one semester. Um, I think this is pretty common. Um, I don't know why the UK does one year, so I have to admit I was really nervous when I found out I was going to Indonesia because um, it is a non-English speaking country and I had no particular knowledge of the country's cultures, language, food, anything before and it was, did come as a little bit of a shock but despite that it, it was literally the best time I've ever had um, I'm sure everyone says that about their year record experience um, but going somewhere so different as well it was really valuable personally and just really different um, I got so many more different things than I could have got if I went where I was expecting to go um, so this was the first time Universitas Gajamada had partnered with the University of Birmingham so we were the first students to go so we were effectively going in blind and when it came to things like visas, accommodation, forms we had no idea what we were doing, it was such a panic and we actually had to book the flights about 10 days before we flew out because we were not sure if we were going to get our visa in time despite ordering it six months before um, and that's really why I wanted to make this video is because I was really nervous just because of the unknowns when I went to Indonesia I did try to search for YouTube videos online of people's experiences but I didn't really find that many and I think because it's mostly common that I found anyway that most people who go to Indonesia for exchange are from the Netherlands or Germany or France um, and obviously I wasn't searching for videos in that language um, so I really wanted to make a video for English speakers um, on my experience of studying in Indonesia as an international student so I think this video might be a little bit long um, so I'm going to put the headings below um, with the timings of places to skip if you are looking for a particular question so before we even arrived in Yogyakarta, this was my Lion Air window. Luckily this has never happened again, but oh my god. So because um, we didn't know anyone who had been to Indonesia on exchange before, we really were going in blind. So we arrived in Indonesia with no accommodation, not much knowledge of the language, part of Duolingo. Um, so it's safe to say the first week was pretty chaotic and pretty stressful. Um, so that's why I wanted to put this video together to help other people with their experience if they're thinking of studying Indonesia, which I really, really do recommend people do if they're considering it and um, advice for people who know that they're going to Indonesia and what to expect. So first impressions, it is very different to Europe. I'm like, you can't get past that. Um, and I think perhaps you do have to be in that mindset when you go, you, you, it is going to be a different experience um, and you're just going to have to embrace that as much as you can. The Yogyakarta is a student city, it has around 30,000 students, so the whole city is really tailored towards the students' needs, so there's so many workspaces, cafes, and it is relatively cheap to live compared to even other cities in Indonesia. This is the main campus building on the left, and we saw this when we went on a bike ride on orientation day when they took us around the campus. The Yogyakarta is closest to famous Buddhist temple Borobudur, which I believe is the biggest Buddhist temple in the world, and that's the reason why many tourists visit Yogyakarta. Um, but other than that, it's a relatively low profile city, and predominantly people come to study. But it does mean that you might get a little bit more attention, particularly if you're very obviously an international student. People are so interested in where you're from, uh, if you're studying there, what you study, and this is where practicing your Indonesian can really help out. So overall, the people are lovely, um, the food is amazing, and it is relatively cheap compared to the cost of living as a student in the UK. So we usually eat every night at the local warung for around 50 to 60p, which would be about 10,000 to 12,000 rupiah for a meal. But in Yogyakarta, these warungs are on every single street you go to, and Indonesian food is great. It's probably not the healthiest food. Um, there is a lot of oil and rice based, the noodle based dishes. Um, so it can be really quite difficult to be healthy. And I think that was one of the struggles we found there. Obviously you can find healthy food, but it is going to be a little bit dearer. A lot of my Indonesian friends said that because it is a student city, the price of food is 
even cheaper than it would be in other Indonesian cities. So perhaps in another, somewhere else it might be between 15 and 20,000, where in Jogja is always below 12,000. We were assigned a buddy from the OIA office, but we arrived a little bit early and before the Indonesian students arrived, so there was a little bit of a, um, a gap between where we were like panicking, like I don't know where we are, I don't know what we're doing, um, until our buddy came in a few days later and saved us. And there was an orientation day and we got to cycle around campus and the campus is beautiful. Um, dare I say, it really does rival University of Birmingham campus, which is saying something for me. choose Indonesia. So my home university offers hundreds of places you can go on your year abroad. I have to be completely honest, Indonesia was not one of my choices, um, which made me a little bit more apprehensive of going, but I was like, what's the worst that can happen? I can go home, I can either graduate next year, which I really don't want to do, or I can just see how it goes. If I hate it, I can come home, I'm not going to lose anything. So I didn't get any of my first choices, which were obviously the most popular choices of English speaking countries in sunny places. And I was open the email to say, you have been offered a place at Universitas Gajamada. And my first thought was, I can't speak Spanish. But turns out Universitas is a, not necessarily a Spanish word. And then I found out I have to learn something a little bit different to Spanish instead, and that is Bahasa Indonesian. And yeah, it eventually turned out so much better than I would have thought. And I don't know if I really believe things happen for a reason, um, but I wouldn't have met the most amazing people there and I wouldn't have had such of those, all of those amazing experiences if I hadn't have gone. What are the classes like? So it's safe to say the classes are very different to how we study at home and not only is there a heightened level of respect for the lecturer, um, but the classes are also a lot smaller than they would be in the UK. What would be a 300 seat lecture in the UK would be a 30 person class in Indonesia. And I think this made the classes a lot more engaging. Even though there was a lot of heightened level of respect for the lecturer, um, they seemed a lot more personal. It is kind of difficult to describe accurately the differences between teaching in the UK and in Indonesia, but there are really some distinct differences. And I think most of that is the style of learning. So in the UK, the emphasis in uni is really critical thinking and applying theories to knowledge yourself. And while that is the, still the element in Indonesia, the learning really is a lot more applied. Mostly it is a lot of case studies, studies where you learn about a case study in group work or in a class and apply the theory to the case study. And I really like this way of learning. I think I found it a lot more interesting after two years of learning theories predominantly in uni. I think I was at a stage where I was falling a little bit out of love with my subject and I think if there's one thing I can really take away from Indonesia like studying there it is it really has like invigorated back uh, why I chose to study this at university and made me think a little bit more about what I want to do with it afterwards. Things I found a little bit frustrating was the concept of Indonesian time. Classes usually start depending on your faculty at 7am or 7.30 because it gets really really hot in the day um, but then again classes finish at 5.30 or five again depending on your faculty but it can happen a few times the classes might get cancelled the day before the hour before when you arrive without knowing they'll be like sorry the lecturer can't attend today and you're like oh which sucks if this is at 7 30 a.m but oh yeah like obviously we did the english speaking classes and students in there usually have a really good level of english probably maybe better than mine and everyone was really nice and really really smart uh, so what is the campus like? Um, the campus facilities are amazing and so much investment you can see has been put into them. Um, the campus is huge and it has a massive park in the middle. I'd actually planned to make this video whilst I was still in Indonesia, um, but obviously quite unexpectedly um, we had to leave quite quickly and um, so I wasn't able to take the videos I really wanted to, so I have to make do with these photos. What I really like is that this investment and development was not only put into the more practical subjects, I guess, like engineering and the sciences, um, but it showed the social sciences a little bit of love and the physical politics faculty building was huge and really nice. And it's really nice, like really refreshing 
to see because I know at home like the social sciences are often ignored and get like crappy buildings with like they were falling apart and it was really nice to see that so much investment had been put into our subjects. And yeah one thing I can really take away from my experience is that it really did make me value what I study a lot more. Um, I think at time, a lot of times at home you can get a little bit brought down by maybe comments being like what are you actually going to do with that and I'm like and I think in Indonesia so much more value and importance is placed on subjects such as politics and IR because people can really see the value of studying subjects such as that and yeah it, it really did remind me of why I, sub I study this which is an experience I have heard as well from other people who do maybe more essay based subjects and have studied abroad is that love for your subject has been reinvigorated through seeing it from a different perspective free time and travel. I was probably usually in uni about three days a week which meant obviously we had four days to explore the city or travel or just do whatever and there are so many things in Jogjakarta that you can do and a lot of that does revolve around eating but even if you were going out for a fancy meal it probably wouldn't cost more than about five pounds or ten pounds and that's for a really nice meal. There are also loads of malls such as Hartono or Sleeman City where there are really nice cinemas and the ticket is probably around two pound and the popcorn's about three pound so you know some things don't change um but the movies are in english with indonesian subtitles mostly so i have never been to the cinema more in my life i saw every film that came out i saw frozen 2 which was great and was packed um the joker it too like literally any film that came out i'd be like oh let's go to the cinema for two pound and it's nicer than like city world yeah and again, I really didn't know what to expect when arriving in Indonesia. I didn't even think about bringing a swimming costume. It was just like something I just like threw in at the end. And because the cost of living is a lot lower than it is in Europe, it gives you a lot more options with that opportunity to travel. Um, because of that, we were so lucky in that we were able to do so much, even though our time got short. I don't feel like I particularly missed out on much because even at the end of the first semester, I said, if this is the only semester I was doing here, I would be really happy and satisfied with the travel and things I've seen and done and the people we have met just from this short time alone. So in Indonesia we visited Karimanjawa, Komodo Island, Ijen, Semarang, Pachitan many times uh, and of course Bali and Lombok which is where most people go to Indonesia. I really wanted to go to Sumatra um, but unfortunately due to a little virus I was unable to do that um, so hopefully maybe in the future I can go back and visit the orangutans. Yeah, especially in Java, like the value for money is really good. Um, you can pretty much get a bus anywhere or a train for under probably five pounds. Even when we visited Thailand after Indonesia, everyone's always like, Thailand is so cheap, you know, you get so much value for money. And we were like, this is expensive. Like, I am not used to paying more than a pound for my dinner. Like, in terms of housing, um, most international students lived in private accommodation. Um, there was an opportunity to live in a cost, um, but the rules there were quite strict. Um, this is my house right now in the second semester. Um, and just here is my friend's house, which was much nicer. Um, so as you can see, the international houses are really, really nice. And most of them have pools. Um, and unlike the costes, they don't have any rules of when you have to be back or not. And they can be mixed gendered. Um, so they are really, really fun and such amazing houses.
And what's great is that per month they cost probably about a third of what I was paying in Birmingham for a whole house with a pool and hot water and everything. So you can live in a cost which is like a boarding house if you choose to, um, but we chose to live in the private housing because I don't know when in my life I'm going to be able to live with a pool again and I wasn't too sure how I would particularly like the rules that were associated with the costs and having like our accommodation as it was, it was just that little bit of home comfort. Overall, it was an amazing experience. If you're thinking about it, I hope this has helped maybe push your decision a little bit more. Or if you're going, please feel free to message me on Instagram if you have any questions about accommodation or, or visas or what to expect when you get there. Um, I'm more than happy to help. I hope you enjoyed my video today and I hope it was helpful or interesting, even if you're not planning going to Indonesia. And please like and subscribe if you would like to see more of these kind of videos.